to Renee Marie Stroke of Luck. I'm Renee Marie and this is the Renee Marie Stroke of Luck internet TV show from Village Connection uh, Network and we are so honored and privileged to have this platform provided by Village Connection um, and we're actually starting the show off a little bit different today because um, Judy and Nancy, two of my board members, have spotlight segments and uh, and we really wanted to allow them the time to share their their information to give them the spotlight to um, bring some awareness to you. You know, we always have a lot of um, guests and stories and and really information. And and I tell you, um, the shows have really been very informative lately. A whole different variety of um, of, uh, inf- of of subjects, you know, that were really important. Um, but before we get to all that, and that that's why we start at the show like this, and then I'm going to, of course, sing a little song in a little bit. Um, I wanted to share some information with everybody. Um, first of all, our telethon is scheduled for May 5th, 2019. It's our fifth annual telethon. We're so happy and, and, and honored. We're going to be working with Jim um, and Village Connection Network again, and we're really honored and privileged. So thank you, Jim. Thank you for for welcoming us the second year. Um, we haven't figured out the details yet. I'm still, you know me, I have to pray on it. I really am praying very hard on it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm 99.9% there. So um, but we are definitely going to be working with Jim for broadcasting reasons and, and networking reasons. Um, but 
we always wanted to work with Jim anyway, but we were trying to figure out broadcasting from another location with Jim there, but it just doesn't work. All the, all the, um, engineering stuff is in this studio. So, um, so we're, we're switching a little bit, but I have a great idea and uh, actually it was Jim's idea. So we'll bring it to you, um, next week. I promise next week is going to be our release date. <laughs> um, uh, what else? So today is Veterans Day. We want to honor all the veterans. Um, and Jim is one of them. Jim has uh, served our country. What did you, what, what, in what capacity, Jim? I was in the Navy and I was an um, electronic warfare technician. Wow. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Um, we take them for. I didn't get to shoot anyone down, though. Uh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yeah, isn't that traumatic when you when you when I, you? I can imagine having to do that. It's got to be traumatic. So you have enough yeah, um, going yeah. on in your life for your physical, um, you know, challenges yep, that yep. it's it's not something that you need. So you are blessed. But we want to send and to Bobby Baby Walker. I don't know is Kathy on the show yet, Kathy. Are you on the show? We want to send our regards out to Bobby. He's one of our board members. And Mike, it, Mike, Michael, it was um, Michael uh, Moore. What was his, his last name? Um, he does the show with you Monty, guys. Like yeah, yeah, he yeah. was he was a, a vet as well. He's yep, a vet yep. as well. So anyway, we want to He's send. Army, though, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there's competition between you guys already. Oh my God. <laughs> Loving competition, loving competition. So, uh, <laughs> um, we have really, we're, we're really happy because Jan, I don't know if everybody remembers, Jan was on the show. She's an acupuncturist and she came from China. She was a doctor when she was in China. And when she came to the United States, she probably had to uh, take the oil schooling again to be certified as a doctor in the country. So she didn't go in that direction, but she went into acupuncture and herbalist. And, um, and she is sponsoring this month's show. And we just really want to thank her because she believed so much in us and we believe in so much her and, and acupuncture and, um, and Jasmine as well, you know, with Jasmine is a, a part of our family as well. Um, but this month is, uh, dedicated to, um, Jan because she's, she's willing, she loves what we're doing and, and, uh, she, um, she's sponsoring this month's show. So later in the program after, um, I believe it's uh, Nancy's, um, spotlight segment will, uh, you'll see the commercial that, um, Jan did. And, and speaking of commercials, uh, take a, a really a good look at it. Um, not only for the information, but actually I am the one that shot the video and I'm the one that edited it and I'm the one that did the video. So if you want any, uh, videos, um, productions done. I love that. I love to create. I love to help people to showcase what is really important in their lives. So um, take a good look at it on both avenues and uh, in my information on the uh, the um, to, you know, to, to contact me is on that program, as well as if you're interested in being a sponsor for our our this show, what happens is, is you would you would make a, a donation to our foundation um, and it's a 501c3 so any benefits uh, any you know tax deduction by the law um, you could you can use it for your tax rebate refund um, whatever the law is I don't know what the specific law is right now I heard it was changing and all that kind of stuff um, but then then on the on the check you would put that is specifically to sponsor the um, the stroke of luck internet TV show and then of course we're going out for sponsors for the telethon because the telethon is our fifth annual telethon and it really is a huge milestone for us huge milestone and um, we're gonna be talking about that a lot in the near future um, so thank you Jan uh, we'll look forward to seeing your commercial and now I want to um, can you open the camera up for uh, J Judy and Nancy are they on so hi Judy hi. and Nancy how are you good how are you hi. how are you Renee? good good thank you for taking the opportunity to use this platform to use your experiences and your knowledge for um for you know for awareness and information judy what is yours on caregiving 
caregiving. And Nancy, what's yours on? Stress. 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 They're Stress. both really important, really important pieces. And, and you were a caregiver at yes. your dad, for your dad. For three years and three months. Right. Six hours a day. Right. Oh, my gosh. Every day. Yes, every day. There's every stress day. right there. Yeah. Right, there yeah. was. Yeah, and we should actually, Andrew's in the uh, the studio. We should actually have him on one day to, to talk about how it is to be the partner of a caregiver. That's because, a great idea. You know, because not only affects the sure. the person taking the caregiving, right. but it affects the whole family he around. He was having dinner at 10 o'clock at night. With with loving, he probably didn't complain at all. No, he probably didn't no, complain Andrew, at all. No, Andrew, no. He probably said, "Okay." Probably put his tux on. Said, "I'm ready." <laughs> what do you got, Judy? <laughs> <laughs> Took a little nap before she got home, but. <laughs> and Nancy, you 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 deal with stress on the work environment because we you all do. Yes, yes. Yeah. very very much so. I mean, there's good stress, there's bad stress, but I'll get a little bit more into that um, yeah. when I do my little spotlight. Wow, in a few minutes. Wow. That's awesome. So, um, all right. So we're going to, um, if you could put the camera back on me and then, um, Judy, you can fly on out and give Nancy the platform to share. Um, if you want to, if you can move over, Nancy, be right in the center. I, I, I direct to while I'm on the, on the air. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I want to make sure that what they're doing is really utilized in the, in, in the, Captured. That's the moment. Captured in the right format because this is when you're doing live broadcastings. Um, it's forever. It's not a, you know you 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 video it, but then it goes on the internet. So it's really important. Just put the mic up a little bit to your mouth. And okay, so Nancy is going to talk a little bit about um, stress and how it, it affects and it, stress is one of the causes of a stroke. Um, so. And then, just so everybody knows, um, Nancy's going to do her broadcast and uh, spotlight segment. Then Judy's going to do her spotlight segment. Then I'm going to sing a song. And then we're going to take a quick break. And then I'm going to go over. I'm really going to talk about um, the dynamics and how it really interacts. Like Nancy just said to Judy that, um, you know, when you're a caregiver, it's a lot of stress. So there's a lot of facets. So, um, Nancy, take it away. Hi, I'm Nancy. Good morning. And thank you for joining us. Um, my statement this morning is about stress. Well, what is stress? Stress is a, really a normal part of our life. However, according to the APA, which is the American Psychological Association, stress levels have risen above us from 4.9 to 5.1 on a scale of 1 to 10. That's an awful lot. So as we know, you know, stress also is a defense mechanism. Um, our body produces cortisol. Um, adrenaline um, and all of this triggers and can affect our muscles it can it affect our minds sweating alertness and there's positive stress and there's negative stress well positive stress is having a baby going on a trip something happy and that's a good stress and then we have our negative stress which could be anything from an illness it can be frustration it can be depression there's also two different types of stress according to the Psychological Association. There's acute, which is short term. And again, like I said, this has to do with events and things like that. Then you have um, escopic acute stress, which again, that's the irritable, that's, that's that, that frustration that we all can feel. And again, our daily lives today are under so much stress, especially with technology, as good as technology is. It never gives us a moment to rest. We're constantly, you know, have to be on the money. You've got to answer people. You've got to take care. And we really need to take a step back because all this type of stress does cause heart attacks, strokes. It can cause diabetes. It can cause any type of an illness. So we, it, and it's very difficult in today's day and age. Um, but I think we sometimes have to just really take a step back and say, okay, I need a little time for me. And that, that's exactly what we have to do. And stress, like I said, it's just, it's all over. Anxiety, worry. Today, there's so much pressure on us. Uh, even as children, there's children. Children are under so much pressure. Why? Because look at where the times that they're growing up in. They, they're growing up with, you know, an iPad in their hand. We never had anything like that. So it's constant, 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 constant. They don't have a break from it. 
No, they don't get a break from it. And what's happening is that's kind of, I guess, people in our age category, um, we didn't grow up that way. We grew up with, you know, you had a telephone and you had a TV and that was it. And when you (laughs) went home from work, you were home. You were home, right. You didn't take your homework home with you. Today, everybody takes that home with them. And again, there's your big stress factor. And it's part of the, um, it's part of the, the the way life is right now. That's how right. people have to stay ahead. Right. That's how people have to um, advance. Advance. You know, it's 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 part of life right now. But oh, it's yeah. not healthy. It's no, not it's healthy. not. And also too, you don't. Sometimes you don't realize that your body is under stress. You 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 don't realize it until your body reacts. Right. 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 So, and again, it could be heart attack, it could be stroke, it could be diabetes, it could be unfortunately cancer, it could be anything, it could be migraine headaches. It all depends on your body and how you react. And tell tell everyone, because I'm sure you know this the answer to this, like the signs, you know, like if you have a migraine, you really should. You should pay attention to that because that is something that can trigger a stroke, a heart attack. Um, I had many migraines prior to me having my stroke. And I went, I got tested, I had MRIs, MRAs, nothing was ever found. But the point is that I didn't let it go. Yes, I did have the stroke anyway, but at least I knew what was going on. Like something wasn't right. But did I think it was going to be a stroke? No, I just figured I was under stress like everybody else. And okay, it was part of my life at that Mm -hmm. point. One time I called my sister, I had a headache. And in two seconds, the ambulance was there. Yeah. She just wasn't because, you know, she was so aware of my history that she she didn't even like I said, she called me. She said, how you doing? I said, I have a headache. I have a really bad headache. She nine one one. They were at my door. They were banging on my door. They (laughs) they took me and then they gave me a CAT scan, which I don't like too much. But yeah, but you know what? Again, it's like I always tell people, you know, when I do public speaking and everything, um, don't ignore signs That's, because that you was my don't know what it is. And don't, I don't want to hear, oh, well, you know, it's, I feel stupid. No, no, no. Don't feel stupid. You need to act on it immediately. Right, right. You really, really do because, all right, if it's nothing, great. But guess what? What if it really is? Then mm-hmm. you know what? You're in the right place. You got there at the right time. People can attend to you. Right. And that's what's important. Yeah, that's I agree. That's really, really what's important. Thank you so much, Nancy, oh, you're welcome. for providing that information. Um, it really is important to have the opportunity. You know, our foundation, we're always on the move and we're always doing things, but we really want to take the time to share with you our stories and, and the information and the knowledge and the experience and the wisdom that we've gained f- along the way. And exactly. that's what life's about. Life's about learning. Sharing. sharing. It's about sharing. So thank you so much. You're welcome. So, um, Jim, are we ready to show? So, this is the commercial that I was talking about. Um, Jan, she's so dynamic. She's so loving. She's such a, a wonderful, um, you know, caring individual who really, she says in, at, the, at the beginning of this um, uh, commercial um, that her, her job is simple. Her job is to just reduce your pain. And that is the truth. That's what you want your doctors to do, to listen to you and to reduce your pain. And there's other avenues to do it. Yes, we need to work with doctors. We need to work. But there's a whole other avenue of chiropractors, of um, acupuncturists, of herbs. There's a whole other area that we could take in that direction. And now marijuana is becoming legal because they're finding that that helps in some avenues on the medical scope. I, I would, I mean, if I was sick, you know, I would consider it. Um, I've never smoked one single joint in my life because I know myself too well. I know myself that when I love something, I'm all in and everybody knows that about me. (laughs) (laughs) So I know myself that I wasn't going to even try it, but you know, it, I have I have spoken to some people that have medically taken it, and it does reduce the pain. It does ease the pain. So, um, so, so, Jim, go ahead and play the commercial and let us know what you think. Hello, everyone. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Yan Zhang. I come from China. I am New York licensed 
acupuncturist, and herbalist. I specialized in men's health issue, women's health issue, after stroke syndrome, pediatric diseases, and pain management. Acupuncture and the Chinese herbs are amazing. It's been in China for thousands of years, and it helped tons of people out in different situations. My job is very simple. I try to relieve your pain, help you out, and improve your health. I can treat a little bit everything from weight loss, facial rejuvenation, spondylitis, immune system diseases, uh, ADHD, autism, mental disorder, uh, all kinds of pain, stroke and aphasia. When I was partnering with Rene Marais Language of Love Foundation, I also think it's amazing work they are doing because they let more people get to know acupuncture and Chinese herbs. I think education is very, very important. Not only in school, but also the whole world needs to know how to prevent and how to treat the stroke. And the patient will lie on the bed and we have the beautiful music. They can help the patient re relax. And this is all kinds of needles. We have different gauges, different sizes from 0.5 ton to 3 ton according to different so situations that can, can help patients relax during the treatment and also it can improve the treatment function. So we have, uh, we have hundreds of different kinds of herbs. According to the symptom, we will prescribe you different formulas. So we will put uh, different kinds of herbs together to make your own formula. It's very easy to drink, just like a tea bag. You can tear the bag and put all the granules into the hot water, dissolve it and drink it, just like tea bag. It's very simple. Once a day, one bag at a time. And according to different symptoms, like common cold, you can see the difference right away. Like a chronic disease, it may take a while, like several days to one week to get effect, effective. So, Jen, I had a stroke over eight years ago, and I had aphasia. It's pretty good now, but I'd love to make it better. Mm -hmm. How could you help? I would use scalp needle because, you know, certain area of the brain is can control the language. You have aphasia, some people they cannot even talk. Actually oh. you're in a good situation right now and because I can I can tell that you can speak fluently. Mm -hmm. Some patients they cannot. I wasn't able to originally. Oh yeah. okay, so I can use acupuncture to mm -hmm. uh, put in the certain area of the scalp and it can help you to improve the language, the speaking. I have a question you can about call me 347-925-6995 or you can great. go to my website yyacupuncture.com to make appointment. That sounds great. Thank and, you. And expect a call for me. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs>
um, mentor. So you need to have all the, the, the circle around you so that when you do come up with um, an area that you're having trouble in, you reach out to them, you've trusted them, you've built that confidence with them. And it really is important. So thank you so much, y'all. And we look forward to working with you and having you back on the show. And, um, you know, the other avenue is uh, Jasmine as well. Jasmine is um, educated, studying in China right now. Um, and Jan is from China. So we really want to bring them together because together, they could really change the world so um thank you so much okay so judy is gonna present a spotlight segment on caregiving and everyone who follows us knows that um one of our caregiving experts is Anne. Anne does a wonderful job she's written many many books and uh and but this is Judy's really personal experience and she's done her homework on it as well but this is her personal experience and education on um, from the caregiving she gave to her dad so take it away Judy hi I'm Judy Marlowe executive director of public relations for Renee Marie's language of love foundation which is a 501 c3 for stroke and aphasia and executive booking agent for the stroke of luck shows my spotlight today is on caregiving. Caregiving takes many forms. Many of us help older, sick or disabled family members. Caregivers are daughters, wives, husbands, sons, and grandchildren. Caregivers manage a wide range of responsibilities. Buying groceries, cooking, cleaning, laundry, helping family members get dressed, take their medicine, transferring in and out of bed, helping with physical therapy, injections, feeding tubes, or other medical procedures. Caregiving, caregivers make doctor appointments, drive to the drugstore, to the doctor, talk with the doctors, spend time handling a crisis, and are designated on call for family problems. Anyone can become a caregiver within a moment's notice if mom and dad, if one or the other, have a stroke. You call 911 immediately. You arrive at the hospital. You find out the diagnosis. You talk about finances and health care wishes if your parent must go to a nursing home. You spend hours daily at the nursing facility to ensure your parents' care, hope, and love, giving up your job to support your parents. Caregivers who experience the greatest emotional stress are female. Most caregivers are ill-prepared for their role and provide care with little or no support. Legally, it's important to note that you must persuade your parents to fill out a health care proxy prior to their being ill. Otherwise, when they become ill, it will be out of your hands and it will be the, doc it will be the doctor or the administrators who handle the problems and make the decisions. Caregiving facts. About 44.4 million persons in the United States are family caregivers. 46 is the average age of a family caregiver. 61% of family caregivers are women. 4.3 is the average length of time in years that family caregivers provide care. 59% of family caregivers are employed. The source for this is Caregiving in the U.S., National Alliance for Caregiving, and ARP, April 2004, funded by the MetLife Foundation and Mature Market Institute. Approximately 22.9 million households provide unpaid care to an adult family member or friend who is 18 or older. On average, family caregivers provide 21 hours of care per week. This free care However, it's not without cost. Many family caregivers feel isolated, stressed by balancing work, family, and caregiving, and perhaps are even depressed. 
The value of family caregiving to society has been estimated to be $306 billion annually. Nearly 60% of, of those caring for an adult over 50 are working, the majority of them full-time. In the past, responsibilities for caregiving almost exclusively belong to women, but currently about 39% of caregivers are men. The source for this study was the, Nas was the Mature Market Institute and National Alliance for Caregivers in cooperation with the National Association of Area Agencies on Aging 2006. In one important study by the Mature Market Institute, those sur surveyed said that they made at least one formal adjustment to their work schedule as a result of caring for a partner or family member. 16% of them had to quit their job, 20% cut back to part-time, 22% took a leave of absence. Respondents also stated that caregiving affected their ability to advance on a job. 29% passed up a promotion, training, or assignment. 25% passed up an opportunity for a job transfer or job relocation. And 22% were unable to acquire new job skills. The source was the National Study by the National Alliance for Caregivers and the National Center on Women and Aging at Brandeis University. The facts that you should keep in mind are one out of every four caregivers says family relationships suffer because of caregiving responsibilities. 30% of caregivers said they need help keeping the person safe. 61% of family caregivers, as I said before, are women. 42% of caregivers spend over $5,000 annually caring for a loved one. When 16% uh, of caregivers quit their job in order to provide care for this loved one. 58% of caregivers provide more than 10 hours of care to a loved one each week. More than 34 million people provide unpaid care to someone 18 or, old, or older who is ill or disabled. 67% of caregivers say they, they don't go to a doctor because they put their family's needs first. And 27% of caregivers are in the sandwich generation, which means they're taking care of a child as well as their parent. A national agenda is needed. Supporting the National Family Caregiver Support Program to provide caregivers with information and assistance, counseling, support groups, respite, caregiver training, and limited supplemental services, funds for lifespan respite care to give caregivers a break from the demands of providing constant care, expanding the Family and Medical Leave Act, Promote financial incentives, care, career advancement, geriatric education and training, and long-term care policies to expand the case workforce. Enact legislation providing refundable tax credits for family caregivers to defray long-term care costs and compensate for expenses that family and informal caregivers at all income levels incur. Strengthen Social Security by recognizing the work of family caregivers who leave the workforce to provide full-time support and care of the ill, disabled, or elderly family member. Caregivers need care too. They're angels on earth. Some inspirational caregiver thoughts and quotes. Kindness can transform someone's darkest moment with a blaze of light. You'll never know how much your caring matters. Make a difference for another today. The author was Amy Lee Mercer. To care, the, to care for those who cared for us is one of the highest honors. Author Taya Walker. Do not underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, 
a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring. That was Leo Biscaglia. The closest thing to being cared for is to care for someone else. Author Carlson McGowers. Compassion brings us to a stop, and for a moment we rise above ourselves. Mason Cooley. Be determined to handle any challenge in any way that will make you grow. Les Brown. Some days there won't be a song in your heart. Sing anyway. Emery Austin. Have patience. Remember how you would want someone to treat you when you reach the time when you need a caregiver. Linda D. on Facebook. Keep your patience and give all the dignity to a blessed senior. They have earned it over a lifetime. Cheryl C. on Facebook. God gave you burdens. He also gave you shoulders. That's a Yiddish proverb. It is not how much you do, but how much you love. I'm going to start over on that. It is now... It is not how much you do, but how much love you put into the doing. And that was Mother Teresa. Caregiving often calls us to lean into love. We didn't know possible. Tyre Walker from the Inspired Caregiver, finding joy while caring for those you love. And that concludes my spotlight on caregivers and caregiving. And I just want to say to the veterans, Thank you for your service for our country. It's sincerely appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's the Elvis, uh, the Elvis ending. That was great. Because that, those that don't know that uh, Andrew, who's in the studio, uh, Judy's husband, is an Elvis tribute artist, and he is does it from his heart. He does it from his heart. So, thank you, Judy. We'll pick up um, talking about the caregiving. Um, in when uh, Nancy and Judy and I have the opportunity to come together and talk, but thank you for the information, Judy. It really, it really a lot of important details. And sometimes um, when all that information is thrown at you, you really don't catch it all. But um, what's wonderful about this is that you could always go back and review it and really capture what you need to capture. And I'll tell you, um, every time you look at it, you'll pick up something different from it. So um, thank you so much. You know, what I get from everything is that love is the answer, um, that we have to trust that God is there for us and that love is the answer. And, um, you know, while I'm praying, while I'm doing the show and everybody will tell you, like, it's not just something that I put together. It's something that I pray on. I even like emailed Jim, like, 11 o'clock last night I forget what time it was that way I want to do this you know because God tells me to do something so this song that I'm going to be singing you are mine is really God has asked me to sing this um he this these are his words so while I'm singing it I'm just channeling it for God and we're doing it through music because singing is praying twice as far as I'm concerned, as far as God is concerned. And, you know, it just puts us into that reverent mode that we really can pray. So um, listen to the words because it's God telling us that he loves us and, and, and he'll take care of us even through the challenging times. Believe me, life is not easy. Life is a gift. I, that's the last thing I said in my, my book, Stroke of Luck. Life is a gift. Each single moment that you get to be present on this earth is a gift. Even if it's not in a whole fashion, if you've had a stroke and you're suffering from a phasure or you, you, or you have um, a challenge like Jim has with his spine or, um, but, but all of us, as we get older we all have challenges even at young ages we have challenges and nancy was saying before about the social media challenges it really is a challenge you have to learn how to how to um turn it off turn it off, turn it off. Turn it off and really to think about like judy said you really have to take care of yourself first so um i'm gonna sing this song and then we're gonna 
uh, take a quick break and I'm going to join my, my board members at our table and we're going to have a quick table discussion um, because we're running out of time. Um, but we have so much information to share, but that's why we come back every week. So Jim, listen to the words. This is God's message to all of you.
welcome back to Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck. So we're all together. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we love. We love the togetherness that our foundation has and that this Stroke of Luck family has. And thank you to Jim and Andrew for uh, being in the studio today. Um, so let's talk about, like, you know, the information that you guys provided. It really is important details, you know, especially stress. Stress, you know, people don't realize they're dealing with stress every day. No, they don't. It's just, it's a, it's a common occurrence. But, again, um, we have to learn. And they even have said, you know, for instance, your cell phone. When you go home at night, don't answer your clients. Like, you need to turn it off. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But people don't seem to understand that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> people that are on their phones all yeah. hours of the night, they're never resting. They're never giving themselves a they're chance. They're never giving themselves a Some people attack. think you're on call all the time. Right. And, and I get yeah. that too. But in today's day and age, it's very difficult. But you know what? This, this attacks different parts of our body and creates this internal yes. stress. It really is important to have eight, at least eight hours of sleep a night. Absolutely. Because your body needs to replenish. Yeah. And especially, I mean, just the day to day, but also too, people like you and I, okay, who've had strokes. I mean, again, being a caregiver, that's a lot of stress. There's the word, it's there. I have to say that you know? when I rushed to the hospital after I found out about my dad's stroke, and it took me about 45 minutes to get there, and I waited on the information line to find out who the doctor was, and somebody pushed me off the line, and I, and the receptionist said, to the man who pushed me off the line, uh, doctor, you just pushed your new patient's daughter off this line. And he said to me, uh, one of the first things he said to me was, your dad's not going to make it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. You know and what? after a few conversations like that, I fired him, and I got someone with a more positive attitude, and my dad made it three years and three months longer. Yeah, and it really is important. Like, you brought some hope at the end of your your segment, you know, inspiration, when you're surrounded with love, when you're surrounded with positive energy, That's you true. you lift yep. those people up and anything can happen. Anything. All, a, a miracles happen every single day. You know, but that, that, I, mean, I know what people are thinking. Okay, so what happens to those that pass on? Well, it was their time to pass on. Correct. That they, 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 our, our life, our end of our life is already determined when we're gonna. I know that. When we're gonna, yes. when we're gonna leave this earth. So we need to utilize, you know, and do whatever we. I wasn't need to gonna do. Uh, listen to negative talk. I knew this situation was extremely serious but yeah. i don't want to start out with someone who has an extremely negative attitude yes yeah no, negativity is definitely not the right path again negativity causes stress you ever meet those people that are constantly the debbie downers if you want to use that <laughs> but again you you can't be around that because it does it brings you down you don't realize it but it will yeah I know stress. Yeah, and and you know what we we have to make choices in our lives and hard choices, hard choices. Um, you know, I was in a position where um, where it was an unhealthy work environment, and I called a mentor of mine, and I was really crying, and I said, you know, I need this position, I need the financial financial stability because I'm a single woman, and um, he said, yeah, but you had a stroke. You had a stroke, and what's more important, I walked in that Monday and re resigned, because I knew that I was not. And I also have great faith that God will provide for me. It's really hard. I'm telling you, you should never be on a job that causes so much stress that you're going to get ill. Yes, exactly. Yes, because if you get you're ill, become ill. Yeah, yeah nothing. We yeah, both nothing. through that. Yes, yes, yes. So that. Judy, your your caregiving, you know, was really important and powerful stuff. Those. Those, 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 those details. I mean, and not only that, but the uh, nursing home, when he did go to the nursing home, was short-staffed. And uh, I spent a lot of hours there. And I feel that if you're the daughter or whoever you are as a caregiver, you need to spend time there. And if you can't spend time there, you have to have someone mm -hmm. there with the person you love. You don't want them sitting by the nurse's station um, where they're getting no attention. And um, it's just too negative. Yeah. And you know, on the flip side, you know, because I'm in business, you know, leaders need to understand that giving their employees 
time to re-energize and regenerate and 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 the time because people get burnt yeah especially in the healthcare industry you know yes you're shorthanded oh can you work extra oh yeah and all of a sudden you're you're just beating them down and in any industry you're beating them down where they need to have balance they need to have health they need to be able to because they're not they're not being able to provide for you as the employer as the team leader they're not be able to give their best to you unless you that exactly right. and Some i health. i exactly. recall being in my dad's room looking out into the hall and seeing a, a blind woman who got out of bed and was hanging on and I ran up and down the hall trying to get people to help her and there were all kinds of excuses that um, I'm busy right now, uh, it's not my area, uh, all kinds of excuses and finally I found someone to help because mm-hmm. I was afraid she was going to fall. Wow. She couldn't see and she was holding on and she should, you know. Wow. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Andrew's over here. He's waiting for me to make. He's waiting because I'm looking this way. He's waiting for me. He's waiting for me to turn. <laughs> um, so uh, I know we're running out of time today, and you know this conversation will continue. We're we're like I said at the beginning. We're so privileged to have the platform for from Jim at the internet. You know, um, this goes to the world. Like, like this information that we're providing goes out to the world. And that's, that's, that's a, Pretty that's big. A, and it's a responsibility. <laughs> it's, yes. it's a responsibility that we utilize the fashion in the, in the utmost respectful way. We don't take advantage of it and we don't um, say things that aren't truthful and say things that are, you know, uh, unethical. You know, so, um, but I want to thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you. And as always. Yes. As always. And, you know, I always say to my board members and everybody, the door is always open to come. Andrew, come on around. Come on. <laughs> Andrew, our Elvis tribute artist, is in the studio today. Hi, Andrew. Hi. I'm really inspired by Renee Marie. I really oh. am. Everything she does. And uh, every week, to do this every week is, is just amazing to get the word out about stroke awareness. It's really, really Thank wonderful you, thing you're doing. But but we I couldn't do it without the team. The team is the most important piece to the puzzle. Um, because we all have our uh, gifts and we all have we all have to work together to accomplish the goal. That's why I always say like, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're the American Stroke Association, the National Stroke Association, all the associations, foundations, people with strokes, we all have to come together. And that's why our fifth annual telethon is gonna be rocking. Big. It's gonna be <laughs> rocking. So uh, we're gonna, we're, we'll promise to release some information next week, but I really wanna just thank you and know that you know, Judy's always here with me, but Nancy, you're always welcome. Andrew, you're always thank welcome. You. Andrew and I are gonna be singing um, How Great Thou Art on uh, Christmas, the Christmas, Christmas show, show where we're going to be singing <laughs> some music. So, and to uh, our veterans again, thank yes. you for your service. Yes. yes. So, so uh, Jim, thank you again for everything. My pleasure. And uh, let's blow our kisses. Ready? Bye, everyone. Have Bye. a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Have, Have a good week. Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>
where I stand Man has already won. Oh.